Hey everyone, and welcome to our new Let's Play series for Football Manager 2016. This is the beta version of the game that was released a couple of days ago, and the full version of the game is due out in a few weeks. Even though this is a beta version, nothing is really going to change from now until release day. All that may happen is that on the release day there may be see like a, a release day patch and you know fixing any sort of major bugs that they come across from now until then. But in terms of features and functionality, everything is in the game. So we're going to get stuck into a Let's Play series now. Um, we're going to be playing a series as Ajax. So AFC Ajax in the Netherlands, they are my favourite team, have been for a very long time. Love their history, love their, what they're all about, their philosophy and the way of developing players and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to get stuck into them. Normally this is actually my offline um, sort of long term save, but I thought for something a little bit different, I'm actually going to play this as a Let's Play series. Um, yeah, so what I'm going to do, I'm not going to really run through any sort of the new features or anything like that. If we come across anything new, I sort of may just jump into it a little bit, but... There's a fair bit of media and information about out there about all the new features, so I will actually say this: it does seem like one of the most stable and well, you know, most polished um, versions or release versions of Football Manager in a number of years. So that is really, really good. So really quite impressed with it, and um, I think they've actually done quite a you know quite a lot of improvements to it. So that is good. Um, Rodeo. So I actually have spent probably oh god no, it's probably nearly a couple of hours with the game. So uh, actually with this save, to be perfectly honest. So what I've done, I'm going to run through everything that I've done. Um, I've obviously set up my manager, um, and I've set it up as a professional footballer at the national level, so not an international footballer. And also, but we do have a continental pro license. Um, so there's the experience there. Um, in terms of what are we going to run into first, we're going to jump into our tactics first. So this is what we're, going to be, we're basically going to be playing two sort of tactics. So my whole football philosophy is um, possession football. And that's what I love, that's what I like watching, so this is what we're going to basically do. This is going to be our main tactic for basically a 4-3-3, or a 4-1-2-3, whatever you want to call it. And um, this is what we're going to use for probably, you know, maybe probably around 80% of the games throughout the season. Um, it's a mentality counter, it's fluid team shape, and we haven't really got all that many team instructions. Um, so this is actually the first one of the, like one of the you know, one of the biggest changes I think probably in the game is this actual sort of new tactical screen here. Really, really good. I love it. It's such an improvement from the old um, one that we had in 2015, and they've taken a lot of the text out and made, basically try to make um, you know it, 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 try to make it as graphical as possible, which is a really, really good thing. So in terms of the settings we're actually going to be playing with in this uh, for this tactic, we're actually going to be playing a drop deeper for our defensive line. So even though we are playing on counter, which obviously will drop the defensive line deeper automatically, we're going to actually drop it even further. The reason we want to do that is actually we want to make the pitch as big as possible. Um, that, does have, that does run the risk of actually having gaps between our lines, so in terms of our, like, our defense, our midfield, midfield and attack. But we're actually going to get around that by having players or roles that actually run between the lines, move between the lines quite easily. Um, it usually works quite well. Sometimes it does have a bit of a problem depending on what team you're playing. So you may need to tweak that um, in games throughout the season. Um, closing down is actually on much less. The reason for that is we are playing quite a young team, or our, our team is very young and inexperienced. Um, a lot of them, our decision making and things like that aren't the best. So we're actually basically going to focus on defensive shape. We don't want our guys running around, um, you know, trying to close down and making bad decisions and bad mistakes, which is going to leave us open for a lot of counters. So um, we're actually going to play on much less closing down and hopefully retain our defensive shape a lot more. Shorter passing, retain possession, that's pretty self-explanatory. Play of defense is the same, basically retaining possession and work ball into box as well. So we're going to probe around the final third and not take, you know, long shots, pot shots all the time. So that is the first tactic. The second one is a 5-2-3. And it's a much more sort of boom or bust tactic in that it, when it works, it's brilliant, but when it doesn't work, you can absolutely get slaughtered. So it's we're going to be very careful about when we use it. Um, as we can see here, it's, it's got obviously... The fullbacks or the wingbacks are absolutely key to this, to this tactic, given they're playing with two um, inside forwards. The wingbacks are our only source of width, and if they're not, if they don't have bad, if they don't, well, if they don't perform well, if they have bad games, um, they don't give us the width that we need. And if that happens, we can easily get sort of blocked into this middle area of the pitch. So we really need the wingbacks to actually sort of get out, get on the outside of our inside forwards, and provide some width to actually pull the t the, the, um, the you know the opposing team apart, pull them out. Yeah, pull them out and sort of give us some um, give us some space through the middle that our guys can our guys can work with and run through. So that's what we're going to do there. Uh, ment mentality standard team shape is fluid, and we have we do actually have a fair bit few instructions here. So we're using the offside trap. Um, we're playing slightly deeper, even though we're actually playing slightly deeper. We are still using the offside trap. Generally, you wouldn't we'd only use the offside trap with a high defensive line, but I actually do find it does quite work, work quite well with this tactic. So. Uh, so we're going to run with, we're going to go down, closing down, closing down with less. Um, so sort of basically for the same reason as before. 
Prevent short goalkeeper distribution, uh, playing out of defence, short passing and retain possession. Be more expressive, we want our guys to basically um, you know, play their, play their natural games and unlock defences and things like that. We'll pl look for the overlap, um, is for the reason that we sort of just talked about with our wingbacks, make sure they get down the lines and get past the inside forwards. Um, and work ball into box and also dribble less. So those are the team instructions we're running with there. You can see all the roles on here, and I think you should be, guys be, should be able to see all the roles and stuff that we've set up there. Pretty stock standard, nothing too amazing, nothing too sort of you know, controversial or anything like that. And the same with this one here. This is a pretty stock standard um, 433 setup. The the big sort of controversial point with this tactic um, is going to be the deep lying forward. I'm not 100% convinced that it's the right, um, well for one the right role and for two the right uh, the right duty. So. I'm thinking potentially, uh, depending on who we play there, maybe a false nine will be better. Um, but I'm not really quite sure. It depends on how, how our runners actually go. Because if we're on support duty, we may not have enough runners into the box. Because if, if, if we are on support here, we'll only have two sort of guys onto attack um, duties here. So maybe that won't be enough, which is why I've actually initially gone with the deep lying forward on the attack duty. Just to make sure we get a little bit more movement in between the lines and a little bit more variety in our attacks. Um, alrighty, so that's the initial um, initial tactics, I guess. There are like a bunch of player instructions. We won't run through too many of those at the moment. Uh, if any of them come, become important in games, I'll deal with them. But for now, that's all good. Um, Rightio, what are we going to run into now? Just training. For the moment, obviously, it's pre-season. Haven't played any games. Haven't actually progressed in the game like in terms of days at all. So haven't actually clicked the continue button yet. Um, in terms of the training, what we're going to start up, start up with is a pretty sort of standard thing. We're going to run with team cohesion. Um, some people do go with fitness. I'm going with team cohesion because we don't really have a very long preseason. It's only 19 days until our first competitive game. So I'm going to, um, going to get that, make sure our team is nice and cohesive. Intensity is on very high. Um, actually, you're going to take that off. Allow rest after matches. That should have been off, actually. I, I thought it was. Um, so definitely, definitely no resting, resting after any of our friendlies. I don't need it. Um, more match training, and we're going to be having our main focus on our tactic, tactics to get those up to um, as close to fluidity as we possibly can. Um, what else can we jump into? I've done a huge amount of work in... Actually, now what we're going to do first is jump into the staff. So this is the new staff screen. I really love it. Really, really good. I'm very, very impressed. So these little sort of, I love these little, um, these little icon, people icons. So it really reminds me of like infographics. You always see these little, these little icons on infographics all the time. So very, very cool. So the, the staff screen is now split up into the coaching team, the scout and transfers team, and the medical team. And you can also sort of, you can actually see, like, you know, sort of see your, all your different coaches through here. You can actually see what you've got. Um, what different coaches you've got, you can make a whole bunch of you know, sort of changes and things from this screen, which is really good. So you don't have to go into the board screen anymore to increase your coaching number of coaches or your number of scouts or anything like that. So that's good. Um, this one is also very, very good too. So the actual, like the comparison screen. So for example, in the coaching area here, um, this green line up here is the best um, in the competition the best um, coaching stats in the competition, and then the red is obviously the worst in the competition. So, for example, in defending, we are the fourth um, best, we have the fourth best um, coach ratings for the defending attribute in the Eredivisie. Um, for example, in the goalkeepers, we're actually below average because these little sort of horizontal lines here indicate the average across the competition. So we're actually below average in um, defending, so obviously we have to do something about that. Um, like in scouting, we actually don't have the best scouts, which is quite surprising for me for an Ajax team. So Ajax obviously renowned for their player development and scouting. So we might probably have to do some work there. And obviously in physios, we're actually below the average as well. So it gives you a really good indication of maybe about where you actually have to put some work into. So before it could be actually really hard to tell about, you know, what you actually, how you're actually going in terms of your coaching attributes and all that kind of stuff. So that is really, really good. Um, I have actually queued up a bunch of new coaches, um, scouts and physios. So... Jump into transfers. There's a bunch of job offers I've actually made for people here. I may run run into or you run through the, you know, those guys a little bit later, but it's probably not too important. Though they're all pretty decent stats. Uh, you know, all pretty decent coaches and scouts and um, physios. So that is pretty good. Um, what else can we jump into now? It's pretty much most stuff. We're gonna jump into the squad now, guys. So. We've got, I've set up a custom, um, where are we? Here we are, custom screen. This is sort of what I use throughout the whole season. So obviously it's got sort of the main sort of, you know, information here. And then we also have a whole bunch of stats and things here. That, these are basically the key stats that I think are important throughout the season. So we're going to use this to monitor our players. 
Um, so what we're doing here, this is this is the starting squad for Axe. Um, the biggest change that we've probably made is actually got rid of Yaya Sonogo. Is that's I'm not sure that's now the right pronunciation. Um, I can't really see him, him, him anywhere. He actually starts online. He's an Arsenal player, so he's an Arsenal striker. He actually starts online with Ajax, and I decided pretty early on that we really, his sort of, his attributes just weren't going to fit the team. So I actually got sent him, he was online, and I terminated the loan straight away, and he's gone. Actually, no, he's not in your, he's in the B team, isn't he? That's right, because he hasn't, haven't processed the game yet. So here he is. Yeah, yeah, Sonogo. So he's here. So we actually terminated him, his loan, so he'll be sending, um, going back to Arsenal, and because we're going to be playing like a deep playing forward or a false nine, he just doesn't really fit the doesn't really fit the attributes enough for me. He's not enough of a creative player for me, and obviously his finishing is rubbish as well. So, and anticipation, there's some big stats for me in this tactic. So, just just wasn't good enough um, for this tactic. So we're going to send him back. Also, he's earning 22k a week, which is quite a bit for a, um, an Ajax player. So we get rid of him. So in terms of this squad, um, everyone else is exactly the same. The two big changes we're going to make is Laren Duarte here. Um, he and also Mike Vanderhorn, they are both actually going to be sent out on loan if we can get them. But the big thing for those is we're actually going to send them out with clauses that um, mean they can be recalled. The reason we're going to do this, um, well, for Mike Vanderhorn is basically we've got too many defensive players. So obviously we've got um, Diedrich Boer and Sillison as our two goalkeepers. Obviously Sillison is going to be the number one. Um, for our two right backs, we've got Van Ryan and Kenny T. And um, obviously Van Ryan or Van Ryan will probably be the starter. Although Kenny will probably make a fairly big charge to actually you know make up some ground, and they'll probably end up jostling for the for the number one berth by the end of the season. Uh, for our, lo our left backs, we've got Bollison and Vigiva. Um, well, actually, for our left backs, we've actually got well. This is the best um, assistant manager's opinion of the best player's position. I don't really always follow this, but it is sort of a good indication to start with. Um, so for our two left backs, we're going to use Boylison and Dykes are going to be our two main left backs. Boylison's going to start, but he's quite injury prone. So uh, if, you're if, you get, if he gets any injuries, um, Dykes is probably going to um, probably take over there. So both very, very good players. We also have Nick Vigiva and Jaro Riederwald. If I'm apologies for actually butchering the Dutch names here, by the way, obviously not Dutch in any way, shape, or form, so I do apologise for that. Um, yeah, so we have Vigiva here. He can play um, left or center, central defensive, um, also defensive midfield, and same with Riederwald there. So they're both quite versatile players. Um, and for our actual sort of pure centre backs, we've got Johnny Heidinger from. He was actually from Everton, wasn't he? So. Well, it was actually Hertha. Actually, Everton quite a few seasons ago, which obviously I didn't keep up with that. Um, yeah, so Johnny Heidegger, he's returned. So he's obviously 31. His physicals aren't amazing, losing a lot of his pace, but still quite a good, useful defensive player. Um, Joel Veltman is obviously going to be an absolute brilliant player. I love him. He's one of the best players at Ajax. Um, so probably Heidegger and Veltman are going to be our two starting central defenders. Van der Horn was close, um, but he's just he's got too many weaknesses for me, so I'm actually going to send him out on loan, but with the recall clause that if we do sort of get any major injuries with our defenders, we can actually recall him if we really need to. Um, so Riederwald is probably going to be third choice um, centre back, um, So but he's only 18 years old and he's got a lot, a lot of potential, so going to make him basically third choice centre back so that he'll get quite a few games, and obviously Vigiva is very versatile, can play pretty much anywhere across the back line and in defensive mid. Um, Radio, that's all the sort of uh, the defensive guys. Um, Richard Lee Bezoe, if that's the right way you pronounce it. Um, defensive mid guy, 18 years old, a lot, a lot of potential, so he'll get a, he's probably going to be our second choice defensive midfield guy. Um, Vagib is probably going to be our first choice most of the time. He's quite a versatile player without really outstanding, you know, being outstanding in any single stat. So that's good. Um, for our, all right, if we jump into our tactics, actually, it's probably a better way to explain it. Yes, yeah, so we've been through all our back line and our defensive mids. Um, for our box-to-box -box midfielders here, we have Nemanja G. Nemanja, I'm not sure how to pronounce his name, so I'm just going to call him Nemanja G. And he's going to be our, probably our first choice box-to-box. -box. He's more of a an offensive player, but he's I'm figuring that his work rate and his teamwork are enough that hopefully he's going to be effective in the box-to-box -box midfield because he really doesn't he doesn't really he, he's not better than our sort of potential mid midfield attacking. Um, players. So David Clarkson is going to be our number one man for that role. He is an absolute gem. Love him. Um, 22, he's still got room to improve. And from past experience, he ends up being an absolute beast. So very, very good player. He's going to be our first choice in that central midfield attacking role. And then obviously, um, Nemanja G is going to be the box-to-box -box support role there. 
Um, backups for those guys. For the box to box to support, probably have Thalani Serrero. So he's obviously got some very good qualities, obviously, and then obviously it has quite a few weaknesses as well. We're going basically in the box to box purely because he has the work rate and the teamwork. Um, and he does have positioning and off the ball at 11. So he's a little bit of an all rounder. Obviously, his defensive stats in terms of marking, tackling aren't great, but his physicals are you know, relatively good. So he's probably going to be the, the second choice in terms of there. Um, for the central midfield, the second choice is going to be Daly at Sink Graven. So 20 years old, pretty young guy, a um, lot of potential, a lot of, you know, could be a very, very good player. So he's, he's pretty much a carbon copy of. Um, of Davy Clarkson, a little bit not quite as good yet, obviously, uh, but he could be a very, very good player. So he's going to be our second choice there. Um, and that basically meant that um, given that we also had a Shone who could play Lassa Shone, who could play sort of central mid, um, it basically meant that there wasn't any place for Laren Duarte. And so that basically meant, I mean, he's a good player. He's 24, um, can't really improve anymore though. So Basically, that's what I'm, I'd rather put in some young guys, get those improved um, up. I mean, he's a good player. There's nothing wrong with him. Really, I'm sure he could do an absolute great job, but he just basically... We just hadn't made too many guys and just didn't fit in. So we sent him out alone, but we can recall him, hopefully, um, once we get a few offers, if we really need to. So that is good. In terms of our attacking guys, we've got Fisher, Victor Fisher on the left. He's going to be our, our number one inside um, forward on the left. He's hopefully going to score quite a few goals for us. Um, Emin Yunus is a new guy to Ajax and German, 21-year-old German guy. Um... He's uh, He's got a lot of limitations. I'm not really convinced he's going to be all that good a player, but we did sort of buy him just this season. So I'm going to stick with him for one season, see how he goes. Very, very quick, um, very good dribbling, first touch, all that kind of stuff. But obviously his mentals are pretty rubbish. Um, and, you know, he's definitely got a lot of weaknesses, work rate, teamwork, all that kind of stuff. So see how he goes. Not convinced, but I'll give him a run in that um, inside forward left row and see how it goes. On the inside forward left, we've got Emmanuel El Ghazi. He's, he's a very good player. Um, he's a little bit more of a winger though, and we are playing with an inside forward role. So I'm definitely going to give him a lot of games to give him a lot of time to develop. Um, but for this sort of initial starting period, I'm actually gonna give Lasse Shone a go on the right. I know he's not really an inside forward, doesn't have the pace, uh, doesn't have amazing finishing, but he's a very good all round player. And I'm hoping that given that he's on this support role, he's gonna be a little bit more sort of involved in and out in the air rather than sort of just being a pure like the inside forward left just running in to try and score goals so hopefully he's going to be a little bit more supportive um, setting up goals all that kind of stuff so we'll give him a run there and see how we go um that's pretty much everyone apart from the strikers so in terms of strikers um milik i can't pronounce his first name mr a milik is going to be our number one striker so he's the best striker in at ajax by an absolute country mile so that's why we're going to use him there um, very, very good play. He should do really well in the um, you know, deep playing forward and also false nine role. So he should be really, really good there. Um, we also had, obviously had um, Yaya Sonoga that we're actually sending back. Um, so that actually just leave us with a, we actually don't have a, like a secondary main striker, which is like someone, just a pure striker. So what we're going to do is I'm actually going to give um, El Ghazi a, probably he's going to be our, number, our second choice striker there in that, um, in that striking role. So he's probably going to get, depending on how many games he gets up here at um, AMR, or attacking midfield right. Um, he, yeah, we may sort of, um, we may give him, you know, quite a few games at st at the striker role. So depending if Millie gets injured on it, hopefully he doesn't. He hasn't really in previous versions of the game, so I hope that hasn't really changed. Um, yeah, so we'll give El Ghazi, probably El Ghazi is going to get quite a few games between the, between the um, infight, attacking midfield right and the striker roles. He should get quite a few games. Um, so that's all the team, that's all the guys. It may seem a little bit light. I'm actually quite tempted to bring in um, Mr. Nuri. So if we jump down here into, where are we? Are we? Abdelhaq Nuri. Um, actually bringing him in as a secondary sort of right midfield, attacking midfielder right here. So he's 18 years old. He's obviously Dutch. A lot of potential as well. Two star and he's got four star potential. So massive amount of potential he's got. Um, he's obviously, he's, he's more of a winger actually, really. Um, I mean, he could be a playmaker, I guess. But I'm probably going to give him role, give him a fair few games as like a backup to Shone um, when El Ghazi is not sort of available. So I think I'm going to bring him into the the main team. So I'm actually going to do that now. So where are we? Development, move to the senior squad. Cool. All right. So there we go. So he's now in the senior squad, which is good. Um, so that's how it's going to be our main team. Obviously, Van der Horn and Duarte will be sent out. But for now, that's going to be our main team. I've done a lot of work. I spent a lot of time actually going through our B team here. So actually have a look here. The B team, Ajax is absolute bananas this year. Absolutely loaded with talents, lousy with talents. Unbelievable. I haven't seen an Ajax 
um, you know, club that had, you know, so many talented players. It's just absolutely crazy. Basically, I made a decision that we had way too many players that were just... It was going to it was going to impact the development of our better players. So obviously, having young the uh, young Ajax playing in the the second tier of Dutch football is a massive thing. So it means that the guys get professional um, gay, professional football games every week in week out. So basically, I wanted to make sure that there were basically only two players per position um, for the young Ajax team, and that would mean that you know all our good players, all you know all those players would actually get like a, you know a fair number of games throughout the season. Um, given obviously you can see the number of players that were here, were here um, if we'd sort of just left these all these guys here, a lot of them wouldn't have got games and they would have just sat there. They would have been a waste of time and money anyway. So I've actually made the decision. All these guys in red, are actually um, we've actually released them. So I've actually released them on freeze. I'm not going to try and sell them or anything like that. I'm just going to release them from the club, get them off the payroll. They can go and find other clubs where they can actually you know, get, some play, get some playing time and all that kind of stuff. So... Obviously, all the good guys I've kept. There's a whole bunch of guys out on loan, which is fine. We can't deal. I uh, can't re recall any of those, so we're just going to have to deal with those and you know wait until they get back next season. Uh, but yeah, so that's what we've done there. So we've released a whole bunch of guys from the B team, and now our the young Ajax is actually going to be a really manageable um, size, and hopefully a lot of guys get a lot of game time there. So that should be good. I've done actually quite a similar thing with the under 19 team. All these guys in red, these little ineligible ones, they've actually all, all been released as well. Um, we're going to be a little light in the under-19s, but I do plan to actually recruit some under-19 Dutch, um, young under-19 Dutch players. I'll probably spend most of my transfer budget on recruiting young players. So I'm going to bring a few guys in here, but obviously a lot of, like, look, look at all these, you know, these talented four-star, you know, players for Ajax in the under-19, under-19 teams. Absolutely crazy. So if this is any, in, any indication of what Ajax is like, is like in real life, um, then they're going to have an absolute golden generation over the next sort of five years. So... Should be very, very interesting. Um, cool. So that's pretty much everything, I think, guys. This is... Um, so that's the squad. That's the training, the tactics, um, the B and under-19 teams, staff. And, yeah, I think that's pretty much everything. So in terms of our schedule, I set up one more friendly, which means we'll give us six friendlies all up. Our first competitive game is going to be the Champion League, Champions League qualifier. I uh, don't know who we're playing yet, so obviously probably try and... We'll, you know, we'll get to that once we you know, once the draw and stuff comes out, so that should be fairly quick. Um, yeah, so we've only got 19 days until our first competitive game, so quite a bit of work to do with our guys, but luckily with jumping into, into our tactics, we're already actually accomplished at, with these two tactics, which uh, actually is really quite good, so it's not going to take long to actually get up to fluency with these tactics, which will be a really good thing. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much everything I want to cover. In terms of transfers, like I said, I don't really probably really want to ch want to change the um, the Ajax sort of starting squad here. I'm pretty actually happy with a lot of young guys, from, you know, sort of really sprinkled with some really good talents. Um, a lot of young guys that can, you know, do a lot of development and all that kind of stuff, so I don't really want to change it. Um, play development is going to be a massive focus of this save. I love it. It's probably my favorite part of the game these days. I've played football manager for a number of years. Um, so obviously achieved a lot of things and all that kind of stuff. So I really like player development. It's really a lot of fun to actually sort of you know build up players and you know see where they go and have their careers and all that kind of stuff. So that's what we're going to um, have this focus of this save is going to be on. So what I think we may do is I don't think there's really anything else I need to do for this first sort of setup period. So I think I may actually start processing the, processing the game and see what um, see what happens. Actually, one thing I'm going to do before we do that. So. Just going to run around the 30 minute episode, guys. So, usually 30 minutes is sort of stock standard for my episodes. So, we're going to do that. And um, yeah, so we have just another seven odd minutes to go. So, in terms of our, um, our scouting, jump into scouting here. Uh, if we jump into transfer status listed and then um, nationality. I'm going to talk about one of the sort of the house rules. I'm going to basically, wherever possible, I'm going to only play Dutch players or recruit Dutch players. Um, the only time I'll ever recruit sort of an external player is where I have a gaping um, hole in my team that just absolutely has to be filled. Uh, but I can't fill it with either a, an established Dutch player or a young player that, you know, could with a little bit of work, could actually fill that role. So if there's just no one like that, then that's when I'll go outside and actually fill it, you know, fill it with an external player. Um, but for now, I'm just going to basically try and go um, play as many Dutch players as possible. That may change a little bit into as we get to depending on what sort of, you know, recruitment, what sort of intakes we get in terms of regens and stuff like that. But I think with the talent we've got, we should be able to do that for at least a couple of seasons. So we're going to do that. Um, so in terms of transfer listed Dutch players, there's no one really here that interests me. Now I've got Marvin Embers here as a striker. I'm going to scout him, but I think from memory, he's not going to be good enough to play for us. Um, and you also got Danny Holler here. It's a defensive midfielder currently playing for Brighton. Scouting him as well, just as a, you know, just as a, a maybe kind of thing, but I'm assuming he's not going to be good enough to play for us either. 
Um, and that's pretty much it. So Dirk, Mr. Dirk, over at Celtic, Celtic, he was obviously at Ajax. Um, he's not good enough to play for us anymore, and I'd rather give some, you know, rather give his spot to a, a young player anyway. So in terms of transfers, there's not really any Dutch players I'm really interested in at the moment anyway. Um, alrighty guys, so speaking of transfer, we've actually got a transfer budget of 8.5 million pounds. So a decent, fairly decent transfer budget for, you know, for the average Fizzy, for Ajax. Uh, especially given that we don't really need any more players, I don't think, to probably um, clean, clean sweep the, the Eredivisie. And then, you know, Champions League is probably going to be beyond us for the first season, maybe two. Um, hopefully by the second or third seasons, we should be... Um, getting beyond the groups, the group stages um, of the Champions League, so that is my aim there. Um, yeah, so I think that's pretty much everything, guys. I think what we're gonna do is start posting this game, and we'll get into the first few days, see what happens. See here, all these guys have had um, given, been given free transfers, so that's good. You can get these all the all these messages out of the way. Season expectations. So the Champions League um, expectations reach the reach the group stage. I'm actually gonna take that. I'm not going to. Um, I'm not going to change that. I'm just going to just to keep it with at the group stage. The Eredivisie, I'm actually tempted to actually go for a winner one just to get a little bit more money. So it's going to bump up our transfer budget a little bit. Um, so you're not quite sure why that, why that number is a bit different there. So it's like the transfer budget for some reason. I probably because oh, we give, gave away all the, um, had to pay a whole bunch of release fees, didn't we? So that comes out of the transfer budget now. So that's a bit of a change. I think last year's version was the change. That's why the transfer budget's dropped. Um, I think it's worth it to get all those guys um, out of the club. Um, I'm actually going to go for the winner of the Eredivisie. I'm, I'd be very shocked if we can't win the Eredivisie this year. Um, Dutch Cup, I'm actually just going to, which, going to go with Reach Final. Can throw up a few um, surprises here and there, so I'm just going to go with that. All right, so those are our expectations. Um, have the little club of Lis have accepted a friendly, which is good. Yeah, Sonogo has returned to um, Arsenal, which is good. Van der Horn. Um, I was asking to discuss his future. Let me speak to him now. So, concerning you're trying to force me out of the club by making me available on loan. Um, 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 what are we going to get? I'm going to say, you need regular first team football and I can't guarantee it here. Don't you think it's best to use my ability as well? I feel like I'd be an asset to the squad. Oh, dearie me. Um, I can't go with that one because I, I don't think I can keep him around. We're just, we're just not, he's not going to get the playing time for it. I'm going to take a stand. I'm going to go that way. Um, yeah. I don't like it. There's nothing I can do. So I'm just going to have to get through this as best I can. Good, good. So he's not happy, but he'll deal with it. So he's not going to cause any problems in terms of the um, in terms of the other players. That is a good thing. Um, loan offers for Ajax's Duarte. So Laren Duarte. All right. So who, where are we going to send him? Lots of offers from Turkish clubs. Um, I might actually prefer him to go to a... Cover the f so anyone that's cover for a first team, no, we're not interested. Um, where are we? There we are. Cool. So anyone that has cover, we're just going to reject all of those. Reject these. Yeah, cover, cover. No. Basically, we want him to be playing first team, first team football a lot. So once we've gotten rid of all these, this should give us a few more options. So we basically go to a couple of Turkish clubs here. Pretty happy for that to happen. Um, just going to double check the off to make sure that um, it's got the recall. Yep, so that's good. Why don't you just accept both of these offers? And, um, yep, yeah, that's good to so accept both of those. That would be good. And loan offers for Vanderhorn. Alrighty, oh. so same thing. Anyone that has cover, we're going to reject those offers. We don't want him to be not getting game time. So if at least you have to go and loan, um, you should be getting first-team football. So you say cover, all of those, cover, cover, cover. Yep, fine. Gee, there's a huge amount of these, isn't there? All right, guys, I'm going to um, run through all these, and we'll be back with the uh, we'll be back in with the video for in just a tick. So, I'll be back in two seconds. All right, guys, just deal with all those um, loan offers. We're going to accept a couple here from a Turkish Super League club and a Greek um, Super League club as well. So, fairly decent, um, you know, level of football. So, actually, probably equivalent to the the Eredivisie, really. And yep, so that's all the offers for there. So there's two; those two are done. So there's not really anything else on this that we need to do for this turn, so we're just going to keep going through the game. Um, assistant manager, we're going to meet the players here, so we're going to hold a team meeting. Um, I wanted to take the opportunity to introduce myself to you as the new manager, so he's good. Um, positive about our chances, I think we're going to win the title, which is good, so everyone's happy with that, so that is really, really good. So they've obviously got very good expectations, and that's exactly the sort of reaction I was after. So I've got a whole bunch of morale improvements, which is a good thing, good start to the season. I'm going to speak to David Clarkson, who's the captain, and um, 
Yep, just going to see how the morale is at the moment. Everyone's getting along really well. We've got a great together, so that's really good. And so that's all we need to do there. So, we're going to keep going through the, the game. Frank de Boer has a left Ajax. It's really funny, actually, that sort of in... Um, in previous versions of the game, he doesn't really he, like. If, it's not uncommon for him to sort of you know not really get employed for quite a while, so which is a little bit surprising. So, for uh, you know, obviously a coach of his quality uh, is a little bit striding. Um, all right, so Marvin Emnes, he's not going to be good enough, is he? Doesn't suit. No, definitely doesn't suit our team anyway. So, not not interested in him. We're just going to ignore that. Um, Danny Hollard, yeah, it's doing the same. Yeah, not not worth him. Not worth making offers for those guys. So. IX training squad, um, where are we going to? Oh, we're going to just Holland, so that's a little bit boring, not really traveling anywhere, so that's fine. Just gonna respond and say auto select, basically take as many as we possibly can. So that should be good. Um, Flamingos Paulinho, so yeah, not really interested in you guys. Available players for the, per uh, the B team match. When is our first? Um, oh, our first match is actually against, Cl against Club Rouge, which is today. So I'm not going to let any of our main team actually play in this B team match. Otherwise, they get two one out and runs the risk of having injuries. Alrighty, guys. This is the last thing we're going to do for this episode. So running at 31 minutes, so we'll end it after this little press conference. I'm actually going to automate most of the press conferences from here on out, but it's a good, good thing, I think, to do side of the first one. Alrighty, you stand here today unveiled as the IX manager. Um, awesome, yes, I've dreamt of this moment for years. Ah, oh, it'd be amazing. Imagine being IX manager. It would be absolutely amazing. Um, alrighty, so do you feel the ambitions for the club are matched by the chairman? Absolutely, of course they are. Um, expectations asked you, are they realistic? And yes, they are. Very happy with the direction we're going. Everyone at the club wants to be the best they can be. Nobody more so than me. Taking this step in football, despite being 26 years of age, obviously wouldn't happen in real life. Um, critics have suggested that we struggle to command respect in a dressing room that contains players older than you are. What do you say to that? Um, what are we going to go with here? Um, mum, 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 mum. I think we're just going to go with this top one. I don't think age is important. The best way to earn any respect to the players is by winning games. I'm confident I can do that. What made you take this job? Um, ambition and yep, ambition. We're led to believe you're a very you're a very attack-minded coach. How do you intend to factor that into your day-to-day -day management? Um, 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 I'm going to go with the second one here. I like when teams to play attractive attacking football. Goals are our most cherished football in college currency, and we're going to try and score as many as we can. Which is definitely true. Um, you hail from relatively close by. Does that help at all in getting to in? Does that help at all in getting the fans on side with your appointment? Uh, I think it only help gives me an immediate bob in the supporters. We can go from there. Um, some managers are famous, famous for their hands-on approach. Others maintain a more reserved manner with their players. How do you see your management style? Um, I always go with this one. So it's, I may occasionally get involved, but by and large, there needs to be a large degree of trust. Um, different managers favor different uh, competitions. Will we be concentrating primarily on the Eredivisie? Um, mum, mum, mum. Yeah, we'll go with the league has to be, be my priority. And there we go. So that's the first initial press conference, pretty stock standard, so wasn't too anything exciting there. Apparently press conferences have been revamped a bit, but I do find sort of as long as the game goes on, they get a little bit tiresome, so I actually just going to automate them to start with. Um, cool, so I think that's pretty much everything, guys. That's, you know, showing the the, the club and the setup, so I think we're actually going to stuck into some games now, so I think it should start flowing, on, flowing along a little bit better, so... Hope you've enjoyed today's episode. Hope you'll stick around for the series. It should be a lot of fun. So it should be quite fun to see how we can actually develop Ajax and if we can actually make a you know make a good make a good fist at the um, you know getting some progress in the Champions League and hopefully in sort of two or three seasons actually you know maybe even reaching the final and winning one. So that would be absolutely amazing. Definitely the aim of the game, at least within five years. I think five years is going to be the aim. Five year plan to win the win the Champions League. So that would be good. Um, yep, alright guys, hope you will stick around for the rest of it, and as always it would be amazing if you could subscribe to the channel and like the video if you haven't done so already, so that would be enormously, enormously appreciated, just get the word out there and all that kind of stuff, that would be really, really good. Um, cool, alright, so that's all for now guys, hope you'll see you, hope to see you all for the next, next episode, and I hope you've all had a wonderful day wherever you're watching from. See you soon.